Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at NEO, NEO Battery Swap Alliance with Honkai parent company FAW4. Now, I don't think I'm pronouncing the names correctly, so I do apologize. But this is the company, if you were curious, you can see it takes on a very similar look to a Bentley or mostly a Rolls Royce for sure, with a little bit of a Cadillac kind of look, while also having a little bit of Mercedes. It's very interesting. You look at this, you know, it's got it's got it's got similar shape to to a lot of cars that we've seen before. So this is uh this is the brand, Honkai. This is the parent company, FAW Cars, for cars. I've never actually heard of this brand before, but nevertheless, it is good to hear about this brand. So this is an alliance between this company and Neo. Now, I don't know much about this plan so far, but what I can definitely say is that already Neo's new brand, Onfu, is already going to be using Neo's ecosystem, Neo's infrastructure of chargeable batteries and changeable, changeable batteries. These infrastructure and products by Neo is crucial. It's the kind of IP that makes your company even more valuable. It's your initial it's your intellectual property and this is Neo and they're utilizing it to form alliances with additional brands who would like to also use similar technology. But let's make it clear, Neo is clearly leading the way in changeable, swappable batteries. This is the technology that they're leading. They can set the benchmark. They can be the one who dictate how this technology really works. And the bigger and bigger Neo becomes in terms of infrastructure development is the more compelled other companies are to form an alliance with Neo and benefit from their ecosystem and infrastructure. Or if they wanted to build out their own swapping station and their own swappable technology and architecture and cars, the first company that they would look to is Neo because Neo is currently doing this. They would look to Neo to see what is Neo doing to have success? How can we replicate it and perhaps improve upon said success? It is very similar to what a lot of companies have done with the Tesla superchargers. A lot of companies are transitioning, changing their vehicles to adopt to Tesla standard charging. This is the North American charging standard, a charging standard that's being rapidly, you know, taken over by multiple EV producers. The manufacturer of said technology is Tesla and Volex. I've heard of Tesla many times before, of course, I've never heard of Volex. This is Volex. This is what they specialize in. And they are the ones who help Tesla to build this technology that Tesla is now using at great advantage. And companies have to go to Tesla to form an agreement that they will swap to the North American standard. I'm merely just saying this just to explain that Neo can do the same thing with their technology, with their swappable technology, and arguably their technology that's probably not available by pattern. Their technology is perhaps even more beneficial and probably more um, valuable. It's probably more valuable because while it took companies a while to swap to Tesla, you know, North American charging standard, I don't believe that it hindered them previously. Companies were making their own. Companies were using another charging standard. So it's called the NCS. And what it's usually compared to is the CC. And often people try to understand what's the difference, if there's even a difference or if there's even a benefit. So what is CC? The one that most companies are accustomed to use. It's called a combined charging system. The North American version of this system, otherwise known as CCS, it's a type of plug standard that adds fast charging pins to an SAJ1772 Type 1 AC connector. It can deliver up to 350 kilowatts of power, which is enough to charge most EVs to 80% in less than 20 minutes. However, the CCS standard in North America is designed differently from CCS connector in Europe. For North America, CCS connectors are designed around Type 1 connectors. It doesn't surprise me that different places in the world use different charging systems. We've seen this before, even before electric vehicles. You live in America, you want to go to Europe, you got to buy an adapter if you want to charge your MacBook, your iPhone, whatever. 
This is nothing new. Now it says here that the CC plugs in Europe have type 2 connectors popularly known as Menex. This is why North American standard is known as CCS1, while the European version is referred to as CCS2. Every non-Tesla in North America, except the Nissan Leaf, uses a built-in CC connector to fast charge the battery. So what is NACS? That's a very important question. North American charging standard. It's a type of two pin plug that supports both AC and DC fast charging. Unlike CCS, NCS is not expanded version of the J1772 connector. The maximum power output of Tesla NACS plug in North America is 250 kilowatts. This is enough to add 200 miles of range in 15 minutes at a V3 supercharging station. Only Tesla vehicles come out of the factory with NACS ports. However, popular automakers such as Ford, General Motors, Honda, Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Polestar, Volvo, Rivian, they're starting to sell NACS equipped EVs in 2025. So is NACS better than CCS? Both connectors are capable of fast charging your EV to 80% in less than 30 minutes. But to figure out which EV plug standard is better, we have to consider additional evaluation criteria. And this is where it gets into design, ease of use, multiple other things. Imagine something similar, but with the Neo swap stations. They have to consider design, ease of use, connectivity. Which is better? Which has more experience? Which has more advantage? So when you're looking at Neo and you look at what they are creating, I've spoken about the infrastructure, the importance of the infrastructure. They have dedicated a lot to creating a lot of these swappable stations in Germany, throughout Europe. This is also quite important in Norway and Sweden. We've seen this and we've seen it in Amsterdam as well and a little bit in Belgium. So you can see this part of Europe seems to be very welcoming to NEO. But also you've had a little bit of controversy between NEO and Audi, which I thought was ridiculous that Audi was complaining that the Neo car names were too similar to all the names. I find that particularly ridiculous. But you can see there's still a lot of work that they need to do throughout Europe. You know, you still got the United Kingdom, France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Romania, Poland. You still got a lot of places, Hungary. You still got a lot of places if they really want to continue to expand. You still got Finland. You know, you've got a lot of places in Europe that still need expanding. But what they've done so far is remarkable and it's good to see and they're going to continue doing this which is what's going to make them popular and this is what i mean when companies inevitably intend to pursue swappable battery technology they're going to go to neo because neo has experience they have experience of both failures and success you've got to understand this is a highly advanced technology when you drive to a neo charge when you drive to a Neo swap station, you don't drive in the swap station. You just pull up and the car does it itself. Roughly three to five minutes. That alone, in my opinion, is quite remarkable. So we will only continue to see a growth in swap stations for Neo. So recently we've seen positive momentum from Neo stock as well. It's got people begging the question, what's really going on with Neo stock? What's really the positive signals behind the company? The NEO stock was trading higher Thursday amid report that the EV maker is launching the first vehicle under the Envu brand, marked as the discount version of the Tesla. It has reversed the gains since then. Now, this isn't just the only brand NEO is working on. It's not just Envu. NEO is also working on Firefly. That's going to be another brand that they're launching. And we still don't know what those vehicles are going to look like. Now, the CEO mentioned in CNBC interview that anticipated Envu will eventually sell its car internationally, as all Neo brands, as all Neo brands will do. They'll eventually sell vehicles internationally. That's really the end game. That's the gold. And I've spoken about Envu as well. So we want to stay a little bit more focused on what Neo can really offer long term. Neo has historically targeted the pre. Neo has historically targeted the premium car market and has recently expanded into Europe. However, its monthly deliveries in China have been latterly modest compared to competition. Well, everyone is struggling in the EV market. Come on now. Everyone is struggling in the EV market. Here's a trajectory of $1,000 investment into Neo and Tesla. What's the difference? 
test is in green, near is in blue. Honestly, it looks almost the same. It looks almost the same. And when you consider just how much better Tesla is doing, I'm surprised that Tesla isn't higher. You got to understand, Tesla has everything at its fingertip now. They're at the pinnacle, but but they're not at top of Mount Rushmore as of yet. You know, they still got the Audis, the Mercedes, BMWs out there, all those premium brands that they offer premium vehicles. They still got those out there. Right now, Neo is where Tesla was probably back in 2017, 2016, 2017, where they were looking to start ramping up the Model 3. And then it went on to the Model Y. Now, Neo is at that stage. They're a very different trajectory. Polestar, they're somewhere where Tesla was back in, I would say, 2013, 2014. I'm just being honest. So a lot of these EV companies, they're either five years behind Tesla, six, seven years behind Tesla. Some of them are 10 years behind Tesla, Lucid. In terms of technology, they're there with Tesla. But in terms of infrastructure, fan base, demand, 10 years behind Tesla. Polestar, six, seven, eight years behind Tesla. Neo, five, six years behind Tesla. BYD. Now, BYD and Tesla, they're very similar in a lot of ways. They're neck and neck. But if anything, what I've learned, seeing how Elon Musk underestimated BYD, never underestimate the Chinese. They take it extremely personal and they will come back stronger than you could ever imagine. And I think in terms of BYD, they're only just getting started. Sort of similar to Neil. They're only just getting started. These new brands that they're launching are specifically aimed at specific targets. Like I said, always, Neo is aiming for premium EVs so that they have higher margins. They want to be the new Audi, the new Mercedes, the new BMW. Not every company can be like Tesla, where Tesla can offer their Model Y for less than 30000 after tax credit. Not every company can do that. Not every company has that clout, has that, you know, attachment, has that fan base. Not every company has that. For Neo, it makes a lot more sense for them to create third-party brands like Onvu and Firefly. You create those brands, you offer similar technology, same technology you have right now, but in a more affordable package. You know what? People will buy. Now, again, Neo welcomes the sixth partner to its battery swap technology. The decade-old EV maker Neo started building its battery swap station in China back in 2018, and since then it has provided over 43.5 million swaps. As of today, the company has 2,413 stations in China, and nearly 50 in Europe. The company welcomed the first battery swap partner, Shangang, in November last year, with Geely, Chevy, Jacques, and Lotus joining in the following months. Neo announced that the state-owned manufacturer, GAT Group, is also joining the technology that is allowing drivers to replace the battery of the cars in about three minutes. I did hear this story about Lotus, and that's big because the more modern Lotus vehicles, I really am liking the Lotus designs. I love the old, I like the old Lotus cars as well, especially the sound it makes. But the new Lotus, the sedan, the SUVs, really superb. I've got to make a video on that specifically because Lotus is supposed to be going public soon. One can only hope this is not delayed and this is not, you know, postponed or canceled in any way. I, I, I'm still hoping that Lotus will go public, very similar to Porsche. And the amazing thing is that Lotus already has a name. They already have a brand name. Lotus is a racing company. They've won championships in Formula One. They could make a return. Now, last year, the Shenzhou based group produced 2,528,822 vehicles and sold tooth, and they sold 2.5 million vehicles, representing a year on year growth of nearly 2 to 3 percent, respectively. The company sells of new energy vehicles increased by 77.55 percent from 2022 to 549,602 units, mainly driven by its new brand, Aeon. Now, I think I might have heard about that brand, in fact. 
大家好，我是广汽集团陈金阳。今天广汽和未来达成了一个全面的充换电的战略合作。广汽在充换电方面布局其实非常坚决，今年的目标是布一万个，是吧？一万个充换电。是的，对。那么未来呢，在充换电方面呢，一直走在行业前列，这一点是非常了不得。今今年为止已经建了两千四百座充换电站。所以我们今天，对我们是争取啊，早日呢。这个广汽的像后国啊这些车能够用未来的换电体系，我们的车也希望能用广汽的换电体系。所以广汽它也建了六十多个换电站。是的，我们尽快的也让我们的安的换电车型的，用在未来的换电车型实现换电。好，广汽未来一起加电啊！广汽未来一起加电。You heard it yourself. You saw the subtitles. Understand. Like I said, this is a technology that Neo has created that has made the company incredibly popular amongst other automakers. Geely, Volvo, Lotus, these brands are that I'm familiar with. You know, these brands are going to Neo. They're not building it themselves. The investment, the cost, the time—it's too much. Just go to a partner and get them to do it. Now, a brand like Tesla, if Tesla, we knew, if Tesla really wanted to practice or to. You know,、uh, approach or pursue chargeable, swappable batteries. Now Tesla could give real competition or BYD, but for the most part, you can see Neo is benefiting as they should. The company will work on battery standards, battery swap models, R and D, customization, battery asset management and operations, and battery swap service network construction. I have no doubt that this technology by Neo will only continue to accelerate in value. Because what happens when more Europeans brands start to approach Neo in regards to this technology? What happens if this technology works? Remember now, Neo has the ability to create cars with swappable batteries and without swappable batteries. You can swap your battery, or you could charge it the old traditional way. You could charge it at home. You could charge it at a charge station, grocery stop, supermarket, whatever. You can still charge these vehicles, or you can swap the battery. It's giving you two choices. Now it's given people choices in an area that people desperately need choices. Neo's new partner Gak Group has three new energy vehicle brands in China, including Aeon, Hyper, and Hyken. Aeon sold a total of twenty-eight thousand vehicles in April, a subsequent decrease compared to thirty-two point five thousand units sold in March. Again, quite remarkable. You can see the similarities with the Tesla Model X. The doors are built to go up. Yes, yes, ladies and gents. This is taken very serious. So Chinese brands are taking Neo serious, and they're partnering with Neo to do this together, to fight together, to win together. How long is it going to take for more European and American brands to do the same? It's not going to take long. It's not going to take long, and it's going to be incredibly profitable for Neo. So that's it for today's video. Unless Neo has a competitor in this space, which they don't, not even close. Neo will continue to gain an advantage, and when other competitors join the space, they are the one who will be five years behind, six years behind, four years behind, eight, ten years behind. They will be behind Neo in infrastructure growth, development, and research and reliability. On some more information, the current members of Neo Batteries. Previously, Neo CEO and co-founder William Lee stated that Neo led Alliance as seven members, including Neo. And more will join in the future. Lee also hopes that Neo will have 10,000 swap stations in the future if more members join, which would be enough to support 10 million vehicles. 10 million vehicles, remarkable vehicles that are not just Neo, but Envu, Firefly, and other Neo Alliance partners as well, including Geely, including Lotus. So let so let me know what you think about this. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think Neo is going about things the right way, leveraging their platform, their technology, their IP, to gain a bigger footprint in the global EV competition? I think it's genius what Neo is doing, and I hope to see more charging stations coming to Europe. And I can't wait for the day that Neo fully launches in the US. You know, I don't think I don't even think they're selling vehicles in the US right now at all. But they're not far away. While the U.S. might make this as difficult as possible to obtain for Neo, I would not underestimate them or any Chinese brand. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hope you found it educational. If there's any information that I missed out on, please add it in the comments below. Subscribe. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Remember, subscribe to our newsletter. We have a newsletter. 
Link is in the description. I'll see you in our next video. Peace.